Welcome everyone, it's Gracier Gaming. How's it going? So, while I'm doing a little mold line cleanup here on a Saturday, I wanted to uh, record a quick video and just kind of explain what's going on with the channel, where we're moving forward, what new content you may or may not see. And uh, yeah, let's just kind of dive into it. So I'm moving in a few months, and I just found out, and I'm in the process of getting, uh, the movers are gonna come, they're, they're, it's still a couple months away before the movers do everything, but I uh, I am trying to hurriedly uh, finish a bunch of projects up, get basically get some Marines built and packed away so I can paint them when I get after I move, and then uh, I want to I got a bunch of sprues that I want to I want to declip the sprues and then put the little bits. Um, I want to put all the bits in like my various bit boxes or bits bags. So it's kind of uh, things I want to kind of get done. And uh, so it basically is essentially the TLDR for the whole video is that there's going to be little to no videos between now and next year just because of all the prep for the moving. So if, if that's all you, you know, that's pretty much all you have to do. Uh, just know that there are going to be less videos, um, maybe no videos between now, between this one and the next year. Um, uh, but I do hope you stay subscribed. It doesn't really cost anything to just stay subscribed. Uh, and, uh, and then when, when next year comes around and I move and everything is all set up, we'll be good to go. But if you want to know a little bit more, feel free to stick around. I'll discuss a little bit more in kind of the detail of where I want to go, things I want to do in the channel. And uh, feel free to post suggestions in the link below. Um, all right, so let's kind of get into it. So what content do I have I normally produce for my channel? Um, a lot of Magic the Gathering because I kind of got back into Magic the Gathering about two-ish about two -ish years ago. I've been doing a lot of booster box unboxings. I've been doing a lot of, um, I did a, I did a lot of commander gameplay on Mitko. I haven't released a, a Mitko video in quite a while actually. And I still do get comments on some of my older videos, which I think is kind of fun. The only issue is, is that Mitko takes a long time to film. It is a considerable amount of time invested into setting up the deck, building the deck list, doing the deck list doesn't take that much research because it's mostly just EDH rec where I kind of just like look at what they have and I, and I like build a deck kind of loosely based upon that. Uh, so the deck building isn't that big of a deal. It's the, you know, doing the deck tech video um, and then doing the, the gameplay videos. The gameplay videos are the, really the long part of it because uh, some of the multi, because I realized when I was doing 1v1, I wasn't getting a lot of views. A lot of people weren't really that super interested in 1v1. But when I did multiplayer, I got more interest in multiplayer. You know, where I'm playing against three other people. But the problem is, is most of the time, the videos that I have posted are not the only recording I did. It's I'll, I'll be playing against a bunch of other people and they're either super slow or they're, um, yeah, most of the time it's like, if I'm playing against a player where they're, one or two of the players are really slow and the game is over an hour long, um, or well up to two hours long over an hour. I'm not too worried about an hour long multiplayer game That's kind of fine. You just put it on the background It's the two hour multiplayer games that just I'm like I don't want to I don't want to put this online I don't want to I don't even want to be in this game right now So I haven't been act, I, I got a lot of demotivation to play commander just because the games are taking so long So yeah, that's kind of what what's going on with commander at least is would I like to make more commander content? Yes, I would like to make more commander content in the future, but it's just, it's just, I, I lost the, the drive to do them when the games were lasting a really long time. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see in the future. Um, just like any of my hobbies I deal with, whether it be Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, Magic, um, World of Warcraft, they all come in waves and, and flow. So some some months I'll be super into one of them and super into the and not into the others. So what, there will probably be some uh, magic content on the channel in the future. As far as unboxings go, I don't plan on releasing any unboxing videos until the new year. Uh, I don't actually plan on buying any more magic products until the new year. So I will, uh, Throne of Eldraine is gonna be in stock and whatever set they come out between now and the winter and everything, um, there'll be plenty of stuff in stock for me to buy. Uh, after I move and everything because I have to get a car. I got to pay a down payment on an apartment So I do need to save up some of that extra cash And uh, don't need to buy magic products right away when I can get them a little cheaper later on So we will do some unboxings in 2020, but I don't believe we're going to be doing any more unboxing videos this year So apologies if that's what you're into um, Magic or so that that basically covers magic covers commander and covers unboxings. I don't ever plan on doing any arena content. So we're good there 
All right, so let's uh, next next in the room. So we got the uh, the lore series, the World of Warcraft lore series with uh, Graven the Death Knight, kind of making his way through all the old zones. I have filmed all of Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor uh, zones. I filmed all of them. They're all done. Um, well, uh, okay, I filmed the zones, so that I have all the footage to make the edited videos, but I haven't started. Duskwood took a long time to do. It was because um, Duskwood is not a zone that's like. It's not a, a next step, next step zone in like the true sense, because in um, Duskwood you got to do a kind of a lot of bouncing around to make it flow well. So uh, it took a while to do the Duskwood content, and uh, yeah. So with me moving, I have a lot of other things to do. So I'm not going to be working. The next episode will be the Northern Stranglethorn Vale. I think it's I think it's called Northern Stranglethorn Vale, and the other one's called Cape of Stranglethorn. Those ones, I will uh, not be able to get to those until 2020. So I have all the footage, so we're not, we're, I don't have to worry about leveling those characters, but it's, uh, or I don't have to worry about filming it. Um, so it's all ready. And it's interesting because I'm not sure exactly what WoW is going to do with the, with the level squish and everything, with the level squish and the stat squish. I don't think that will affect, that, well, that shouldn't affect what I've already filmed. That might affect Burning Crusade zones moving forward. I maybe probably not. I think the quest will always still be there, so I'll still be able to do the lore part. It'll just be the levels will be different, and uh, that shouldn't really affect anything. But so that's where we're sitting at with um, the uh, the World of Warcraft content. So I'm not going to release any other World of Warcraft videos that I can think of aside from those um, in the new year. As far as Warhammer 40k content is, and and uh, Age of Sigmar in general, I really uh, I finished my Blood Angel army, and you've seen that video if you haven't, it's in the channel, feel free to click it. Um, I finished that paint assembly and painting of that army in under a year, and it's the first army I've ever finished in under a year. And I was, I'm really super excited about it, and once I get these Terminators done, it'll be even more finished. Um, like the Brigade is done, but this will this will give me some extra, to uh, extra toys to go with the Brigade. Sorry, I, I've, I've recorded this episode voiceover many times, so I'm like, my throat's a little dry. And it's kind of, it's going to, where, where are we at? Okay, so for, yeah, 40k content. Uh, I did a mass Spurg kind of purchasing uh, thing where I was buying a whole bunch of models for kits that I'm, for armies I want to assemble and I want to build, but I know that I'm not going to get to it right away. I don't have the biggest backlog. I've seen I've seen people on the on the Facebook groups and on the random internet posts with their backlog being like entire rooms full of uh, un unassembled or unpainted models. I have a, a fair decent amount of unpainted models and I have a, a decent collection of unassembled models. And we'll kind of just go in into what we got. So aside from these uh, Blood Angel Terminators here, um, which these are just regular ones, and uh, they're just going to be painted to match the rest of the other Terminators I have. Aside from these, the Blood Angel army is done. Like, I won't, I don't plan on buying any new ones until we get maybe some Primaris character upgrades. What other armies do I have, though? I have an entire Tau Farsight Enclave that isn't assembled aside from Farsight himself, which is assembled and painted. I have an entire Cadian army that is partially painted and fully assembled, aside from tanks that I, uh, like the Bane Blade, I made into an Octoblade, so it's not like assembled, it's kind of like in multi-stage pieces. But, so uh, the Cadian army is pretty much all done, and uh, good to go on that one. It, well, I mean, it's done assembling, but I, I have lots of painting work on the Cadian army. And funny enough, I actually, for the Cadian army, I only use the... Um, the Vallejo paints for the most part. I think I do use GW's washes, but I only use the Vallejo paints, so I have a whole bunch of Vallejo paints. Specifically for the Cadian army. And then I have a Vestroyan army that is not assembled. I got it when they did the metal, I think it was last year or early, I think it might have been early this year or late last year when they did the uh, the reprint run where they printed the entire metal kits for like a week, like they took pre-orders and they printed them. So I, I ordered, I have a about a, a platoon. I have I have enough to make a full army um, for, like, it would be a small army, but I have a Vestroyan force um, to include tanks and chimeras and transports and, and infantrymen and everything. So we have that one. I have this Catachan air wing, 
which is the Vendettas and the Hellhounds and Sentinels, and I have the 30 plus, I think it's like 30, how many models are those? 30, and there's like just about 40 or just under 40 uh, Katachan infantrymen that I've already assembled. And you'll see, you'll see a video of those guys at some point when I uh, finish those guys up. And I, basically I kit bashed uh, 40, uh, kit bashed Katachans and uh, Kadians together to make that army, which looks actually, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, but hopefully in the new year, when we get to uh, the next location, we'll have more room because here in Japan, I have limited space. Basically this table is pretty much my hobby table and I don't have a lot of storage space. I basically have to keep all my all my completed models in boxes. I don't have like a lot of nice, I have one nice display um, cabinet, but it, it's, it's not big enough to hold everything that I have. So I have to have a lot of stuff kind of hidden away in closets and tucked away. So I have that. Uh, and then, uh, so we have, let's see. And then I have another Space Marine army. I have a small force of Raptor Space Marines um, which are not assembled. They're all in boxes. I, I, I don't even, I may have opened a couple boxes just to look at the kits, but they're using the Mark IV Space Marine tactical armor. They're using drop pods and they're using the Cataphracty, I think it's the Cataphracty uh, Terminator armor. So those are kits I've never dealt with. So those are going to be fun to assemble and paint. And uh, it's basically, I didn't want to do another like silver flashy army with the, the Blood Angels. I wanted something more muted, a uh, slightly easier to paint, a little slightly easier to airbrush. Um, if I'm going to use the airbrush, which I do have a lovely airbrush right here. I've, I've been using it more and more and I really enjoy it. Hopefully it survives the move. It should. I have the case and everything for it. Um, but yeah, the Raptors to me are uh, an army that you can paint really well or really fast and it still look good. So I'm excited to do the Raptors and I'm using the I think it's Lias. I, I forget the character name, but he's the he's the special chapter master. I think he's chapter master. He's the special character for the Raptors that's in um, the rules come from Forge World. So um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that guy. And we have uh, an Age of Sigmar Death Army with before Age of Sigmar when it was when it was Warhammer Fantasy. I I used to see the rap or the not the Raptors the vampire um, kits in the store. And uh, so I got, I uh, was like, oh yeah, I want to make vampires. And when I went to Age of Sigmar, I kind of just wasn't paying attention to Age of Sigmar. And I assumed that they were going to be like a vampire version. And they came out with Crypt Ghouls. And I just never really liked that style of vampire. I liked the regal, um, kind of like high gothic style vampire. And I was like hoping they were going to make some new kits for them. And they didn't really make any new kits for the vampires. So I was like, oh, well, I do like, I do like the, um, what is it, the, the movie with the undead? Oh, the evil, it's like Evil Dead or whatever. Yeah. Um, with the, uh, the guy that goes back in time, gets a chainsaw hand. I, I'm like drawing a blank on his name. But um, so I got a death army with some skeleton warriors and stuff. And I got some, some special bases for those. And I'm, I'm super excited to do those. But that project's not going to get done anytime soon. Uh, mostly because of the skeleton models. They're really thin, they're a lot like Eldar, and the bases that I got are, they're, they're like, what do they call like marsh under, they're, they don't have, they're not super flat, they're kind of gritty, so in order to glue the skeletons, I have to use super glue, and the contacts aren't that great, so I have to paint it, and then I, I fill in the base with a liquid water. Once the liquid water dries, the liquid water effect dries, then the model's pretty good, but like his feet are in the water, so. It's it's a more complicated um, hobby uh, to or hobby thing to do so, and it's hard to pin uh, the skeletons because they're really small, at least with the drills and the bits that I have right now. So we're we're gonna hold off on the skeleton army, but I, I started playing a lot of Total War II, and I bought a set of uh, Empire because I thought Empire was going out of stock. And wasn't going to be sold anymore, and so I basically bought 20 kits worth, or 20 units worth of kit. Um, so like, um, I bought a. I use Carl Friends in because um, I I beat the the Total War one full campaign with Carl Friends, and then I went to the Total War Mortal Empires campaign for Total War two, and I started playing it, and I did beat the short campaign before the recent update that came in a couple weeks, a couple days ago actually. Um, but that changed the whole electric count system. And so I'm like, oh, and when I restarted my game with the new system, it, it was a little different. 
And I was like, well, I want to replay this. So I'm actually in the process of replaying the entire Empire campaign, which is it was, it's kind of fun uh, with the new, the way, it, they didn't really change a lot in Empire, but they changed how the, poli the, po uh, the politics work and how the electric count system works and kind of how like you can get friendly with certain units and friendly and not and, like, not friendly with others. So I basically bought an entire Empire army uh, because this, if you don't know, um, they're the Empire. They're they're after Age of Sigmar, and um, the planet was kind of destroyed, and the realms were created. Um, I don't know all the lore of Age of Sigmar, but the Empire was destroyed, and as far as I know, Karl Franz did not survive. Um, but they do have a. They call them the Free People's Army, so you can reuse all your models. Uh, and they do have a uh, free people general on Griffin that looks exactly like Carl Franz. So I bought I bought one of him. I got two steam two two steam tanks. Um, I think two units of demigriff knights. I believe yeah two two units of demigriff knights. Some halberdiers, some crossbowmen, some great swords. So I got a bunch of model kits for the Empire Army. And I do have uh, a couple of color tests. Uh, hold on one second. Let me grab one. It's actually not too far from here. Excuse me. I should have had these already set up. So I do have these guys right here. Let me move these maybe in the light a little bit better. So I did a color test on the basically the main rank file units. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. And we'll pan a little bit over. There we go. So it's uh, light, lighting's not that great. Let me see if move the lights a little bit. Can get a little bit better. Uh, so yes, these are my uh, test model colors for my future Empire Army. We got the crossbowmen, we got the halberdiers, we have um, a handgunner with flag, and we have a great sword with Duter. With uh, he's doing a little Dutin. He's got a little um, what is that? Like a flute? Uh, not a flute. Shit! What is that thing? Bugle? Eh, kind of. I don't. You know what? Not a music guy. I know it's like a horn, and you know he inspires the men. But yeah, I basically went with this color scheme because, um, and the bases are, they're like a wasteland base, but I did them up as if these guys were fighting Skaven and they're on like a Skaven blight battlefield. So I really enjoy these guys. Um, I'm super excited to actually finish painting. Um, besides, <laughs> it's crazy. Like I'll, I'll get in these weird, uh, maybe, maybe this, this is not, this is probably normal among other hobbyists. But I have so many different models that are in different stages of painted or not painted that one day I'm like, eh, I want to paint Empire. So I'll like grab like five Empire models and I'll just paint five Empire models. Um, and then other days I'm like, eh, I'm good. I don't want to paint any Empire. So I'll like grab a Space Marine. I'll paint a Space Marine model. So it's just kind of like, so what I like to do and how I like to do it. These are fairly simple. They're, a, uh, let's see, a base coat, a wash, a highlight, and then a second highlight, I believe. I think I did two highlights on these. Uh, the bases are basically just black with um, uh, the Nurgle's rot inside all the cracks to make it look very um, uh, Skaven Blight-ish. But yeah, these are the Empire Army, and I'm actually super excited about the Great Swords because I was gonna mo so the Great Swords like I really like how the Great Swords turned out actually, and uh, uh, I'm curious to see how like future Great Swords are gonna turn out, but. Yep, those are my Empire Army, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Let me see, if, what else do I want to talk about uh, for this quick studio update? What do you all want to see? Because when I get to my next place, I want to set up a, a better camera setup, more of like a permanent setup, because right now I have this tri tripod slash monopod that it's standing up on, and it gives an interesting angle, but I've seen some other like uh, YouTubers that are specifically uh, or Twitch streamers that are specific for painting Warhammer models that have like a different over over table setup, and like the camera would be above them pointed down. And I would like to set up some sort of rigging like that with with some nicer lighting. And I would like to do more painting, not tutorials, but like painting videos of like this is me painting and this is me like talking for an hour. And uh, if if you guys would like some of that content, I think I would it would be fun and also give me a reason to do more painting and more assembling. Because I'd be like, oh, I have a project. But future projects going forward that are definitely going to continue after I move is definitely going to do some more 40k content, whether it's assembly or painting or showcases. I'm still going to be doing 
Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, 40k, all those good things. I, I'm really having a lot of fun with this. And the World of Warcraft series will return uh, because I filmed it all and I actually really loved, I really enjoyed it. It just takes a long time to do with the scripts and the editing. It's about a week to a week and a half per video. So I'm kind of like, eh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. I only have a couple weeks left. Well, it's a couple months, but it's, it's like, I don't know. The weeks, I you know, the weeks kind of get really short and I still, there are still things in Japan that I wanna see before I leave. So apologies if you're looking for video content and there's none there, but I wanna, uh, I don't plan on ever really ever coming back to uh, mainland Japan or at very least, I don't plan on coming back to this region of Japan. I would like to visit other regions if I come back. And uh, but I've been in Tokyo for a long time. I've visited Tokyo many times. I like it. It's it's really fun. But uh, if if I come back to Japan, I want to go to like Hokkaido or or somewhere more south. And uh, yeah, so I don't plan on ever coming back to this region. That being said, there are still things I want to see before I leave. So the video content is going to take a little bit back door. But after I move and I get all settled in, I will basically be not shackled, but I will have a car payment because the vehicle that I want to buy is a more newer vehicle. I do have I do have plenty of money uh, to put a lot down, so the car payments aren't that high. But um, for building credit purposes, I'm not going to put as much down as I can, so I can basically just kind of have the loan for a little bit longer and help me build credit because I do I would like to buy have a house built a specific to my specific specifications and I'm trying to build more credit over time. Um, and those aren't in, intrinsically linked together because you can get a, a house loan or a construction loan without having a car loan, but it does, it, it's just one of those financial things where uh, I won't have as much spare run around cash uh, when I get to my next place. So I'll have more time or I'll, I'll be able to devote more time to like hobby stuff and videos because I won't be running around as much. And I have plenty of uh, World of Warcraft content to uh, to keep me busy when I'm not doing videos, so there's that. Uh, let's see, any other videos? I would like to do some uh, Total War 3 when it comes out. Uh, I don't know when. I don't, Total War 3 might not, might not come out for two years. They are, in, as far as I know, it's in development. I don't know what armies will be available. I'm hoping that they did what they did with Total War 2 and they just keep moving forward where you'll be able to have... Either, either right from the beginning, they should have all the armies and all the races available, or like what they do with Total War Two, is that they have the main campaign is focused on like four to I think it was like four at the beginning, like four to six factions, and then they have like Immortal Empires, which is, is everybody in the entire world. So I'm hoping that uh, Total War Three is that, and then I hope that Creative Assembly makes a Warhammer 40k version of Total War because I think that's really good. But I think the la the, the the next Total War they're releasing is like a a Spartan type one. I think it's um, kind of a Greek theme, I think is what I what I heard, which that could be fun, but I don't know. Fantasy is just, fantasy is my jam. And uh, Age of Sigmar is, you know, it's a close second as far as like the lower whites is going. No, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, studio update. So uh, feel free to stay subscribed. Uh, there's no real reason to leave. You can send me messages. I don't get that many YouTube messages. Uh, you can leave a comment and I will normally uh, get the message. Uh, depending on what it is, I will reply. And um, yeah. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the video content and uh, hope to see you in 2020. Have a good one. Stay safe.